And so let's look at how we can test our intrusion detection system for our heart bleed vulnerability. Okay, so heart bleed is caused by the within the SSL TLS connection, which is a secure connection which connects to port 443 on, on a, a web server. And then what we have in between is that we have a, a heartbeat signal which can go between the client and the server. So with the heartbeat, the client asks for the server to, to respond immediately and if it doesn't, then it can disconnect the connection. So it's a fairly standard thing that's used in networking protocols to send a keep alive type signal. So let's look at some detail uh, in, at the, the basic protocol itself. So within inside our heartbeat request, we have a small area of data that, uh, that is contained within inside there. So the first uh, byte that we have relates to the heartbeat signal. And then the next one, so it's a 24, is part of this TLS protocol. The next two bytes identify the TLS type. In this case, it's TLS 1.1 is 03, 02. And then we get the length as the next part here identified by these two bytes here okay so this is the least significant byte and this is the most significant byte then the next one is that we define that this is a request so we'll see that a little bit later so this is the request from the client to the server and then this is where the vulnerability comes in this is asking for a payload length of 40000 hex if we bring up our calculator, we should find that uh, we'll do a hex calculation. That gives us 16k. Okay, so this is what is requested from from the the client to the server, and this is where the vulnerability comes in. If we actually have a look at our script, we should be able to see our testing script to see this vulnerability here. So there is the payload, depending on the, the different versions that we have. So the first thing that the script does is to determine what TLS version that we have or SSL. And then it will actually create a payload of this one here. So there we go. That one is, is very similar to this one here, but you can see the second one is a different version. Okay, so that's for the different version of TLS that we can have here. Okay, so that's the payload that's actually created. If we look at the, the specification from here, we can actually see the specification is the, the type Okay, so there we've defined the type, the payload length, and we should find that if the heartbeat message is too large, then we should uh, discard silently. So let's have a look at the, the Wireshark trace. So this is our trace here. Okay, so it's been taken from a real connection to, to a web web server. So the connection is from this node at 150 and the server is at dot one. So if we search for our 1803, we should see the heartbeat request going in. And there it is. There it is. There. Okay, 180302 in this case because it's found out that it was used in TLS 1.1 and there is the rest of it and there's the payload length there. So what comes back, if we look at it, is this. Okay, 
Okay, so what comes back is also our 18. Just takes a little bit of searching for it. There we go. So this is what comes back 18, 0, 03, 0, 02, 40, 00. 0. So look, see, see what's happened here. The request has came back with the payload length that we've actually defined. So there's exactly where the vulnerability in Heartbleed actually is, that we've defined the payload here. And then what's responded back is a new payload size here. Okay, so whatever the client puts in here will actually come back here, and then the memory will come in from the server. So the 0 02 here is actually the uh, the the response. Okay, there's the response there. And here we go, 40, 0, 0. There, there it is again. So what then appears after that is actually the whole payload of the 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 payload from from the memory of the of the web server. Okay, so you can actually see in some detail how that how the Heartbleed actually works. So what we'll do now is that uh, we'll have some snort signatures. Okay, and I'll show you the two ways to do this. So normally you would uh, test them offline to make sure that everything's fine. So we have a PCAP file here. Okay, so I have a PCAP file called heart.pcap, which uh, you can see in the trace here. And then we also have some rules. So here are our rules. Okay, and basically what our rules actually do is to be able to detect for this pattern that we've seen. Okay, so there is our 003300 or 01 or 02 or 03. Okay, each one is identifying a different uh, TLS or SSL. So the one we had was this one here. So we got the 02 there. There we go. So that's the 02 there. But if we were using TLS 1.2, it would be a 03 there. If it was a 1 version 1, TLS version 1, there would be a 01 there. Or if it was 00, it would be SSL version 3. Okay, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to test these rules and to see if Snort will be able to detect them. Okay, so the method we use is Snort minus R for the PCAP file. Minus C for the rules file. Minus C. And then we'll create a log file called log6. What we'll have to do is to make that directory first. Then run there. So it's very quick uh, running there, but we can see that we have two alerts. So it's triggered twice. Hopefully it's triggered on that one and that one. So we're going to log six. And there we are there. And we can see that that has triggered. So hopefully it is those two two ones there it's triggered on the version 1.1 there so that, that uh, works well and we should be able to see 64667 as part of the connection that we have there we go 64667 okay so that that shows uh, how we can test our snort signatures to be able to detect and hopefully you've seen how we can actually pick off the vulnerable packets from there, how you can identify the 18. Remember, 18 was the heartbeat request. These two bytes identified the, the TLS or SSL. Remember, 0300 is SSL3. 01 is version 1 of TLS. 02 
1.1 and 0 0.3 is 1.2. The next two, the length, doesn't really matter in this case. Then we got the request. On the other side, we got a reply. But this is where the problem is caused. This is now asking for 16k uh, back from the uh, from from the server. When we got a response back, what we got when we examined it was the same back 18 0 0 3 0 2, and there's the 4 0 0 0. Okay, that's the most significant byte there, least really significant. There's the 0 2 for the response. Then there is the payload size and there is the payload. So the second method that uh, we can use is to use a security website to be able to analyze it. So if you go to advanced network forensics, you should find lots of lots of details on, on this. But if you go to the Heartbleed test, what it does is it runs through the rules file that we saw there and also for the PCAP file. Okay, so the rules file that we're actually using. Oops. Okay, so, so now we have the correct rules file and let's have a look at this. So what this will do is run through this rules file into snort. So we've seen that before. Remember what we're looking for, 18.03.00 or 1, 2 or 3 at the end. And then this is the alert file that we can actually get. So this just does the same as our snort analysis. Okay, so just one more time just to reinforce uh, what we're actually seeing. When we create the vulnerability, 18 is the heartbeat, 03 identifies the TLS and then the value we get after that identifies the version, the length, the request as a one or a two, and then here we hear, this is the payload which, which heartbleat takes through, so if we look at the actual code, the value that comes through is the payload actually gets allocated into the memory and then what happens is that the the actual memory is written back in the response of the of the, of the, the response. Okay, and just a final check when we look at our response, what we see is the actual contents of the running memory on the server. Okay.